Well, welcome everybody to the Monday, March 7, 6 p.m. Select Board meeting and at 6.30 p.m. the Select Board and the Finance Committee joint meeting. Um, call the meeting to order and actually so just take a, a, a brief moment to acknowledge this is our first in-person meeting um, of this year and um, we're all I guess grateful to be in the same room together yay so um, progress I guess <laughs> um, first item approve the minutes of February 28th everybody get a chance to look at them yeah, motion to approve I make that motion Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. We have no warrants tonight. Meetings attended by select board members. Erica? Uh, none. That's our last meeting. Robert? Um, we've done some informal visits, sort of going up just to see, to look at the Nexiamp site, see what's happening with the, with the sand being washed down from the driveway. And, uh, there's a little bit of a sand curtain at the bottom of the driveway, pushing out into Poland Road. Um, and and uh, we've gone back and forth with Comcast a couple times over the franchise agreement over a couple language issues where we like our language and they like their language. And we'll see where we can end up. I like our language. <laughs> Don't like their language. Um, all right. Well, I had several really truly unpleasant meetings on behalf of the town. Um, Wednesday was the uh, was the joint meeting between uh, Frontier School Committee and then the Four Towns School Committees for the mask policy. And um, you know, just like the previous massive joint meetings, truly unpleasant, massively unpleasant, horrible. How many people? Um, there was 90, 90 something. <laughs> yeah. And um, was this all on Zoom? It was on Zoom and um, yeah, it started at five o'clock. I think it ended at nine or something. It was just so unpleasant. Um, we ended up approving the the, uh, the recommendation of Meg Birch and the, the, the administration of the school to go, become mask optional as of March 14th. Um, and that's just the longest so that, and uh and then the following day was a uh, union negotiating committee mm. so um yeah so i'm traumatized and i'm trying to get over it so <laughs> public comments do we have any no well i just want to check and make sure can everybody in the public here since this is our first back to hybrid is everybody able to hear me i can hear thank you jen I can hear you. <laughs> Loud and clear. I can hear you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Right. We can hear you, Joe. Thanks. All right. Um, so we know all this new business. The first is quick vote to approve the, a Board of Health nomination of Emily Sweet to fill the remainder of the term of the open seat until June 30th um, of this year. Is Emily here? Mm -hmm. No, there's no reason no, for her to no, be. No. So um, I move to approve I the second. Board of Health nomination to fill the remainder of the current open seat. That term expires June 30th. And uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Can we say yes. vote by saying thank you? Yes. <laughs> yes. Very good. Very good. Good. Good recruit. Well done. Um, so then uh, the next. Honored to have with us Kate McDonough, Janet Shea, Cynthia Lawton Singer. I don't know if is Janet here. I thought we were moving up um, Jan's carpet. Oh, okay. Are we moving up, Janet? Okay. That's okay with you. Yeah. All right. If it's okay, can we? Um, we're going to move up Jan Warner's ARPA request first. If that's okay. Um, Jan, do you want me to share the screen, or were you planning to? Um, you can share it. That'd be great. Okay. So Jan comes discussing ARPA. Yeah, hopefully a, a very quick request. Um, this is something that I had previously passed by because it might be um, considered sort of a, a luxury for the town to have. And I probably just shot myself in the foot, but um, it's called <laughs> <laughs> Employee Web Services. So it is a module on our payroll system that would allow for employees to look up their own 
information, look at their pay stub, look at their W-2. And uh, in addition, it would allow them to submit uh, their timesheets to their manager for approval and then straight to us uh, in the payroll department once they're approved. So it comes with a pretty hefty price to add it on at $9,295, so $9,295 as a one-time cost for training and implementation. Um, so that's the part that I had, you know, kind of steered away from before I, as a small town, I wasn't sure that we could afford that for, um, to update our systems. So um, with the ARPA money, we might reconsider that to bring us up to speed and, and keep us up with the rest of the world. And what this um, does is it, it saves us a lot of time and money and processing, paper processing, um, things that you know cost money, time and money. So if you could move down the screen, Veronique, I've done a, just a brief cost analysis and what it costs us to fold and stuff and stamp envelopes and mail out the paychecks every week. Um, you know, there's time, supplies and postage necessary. So with the implementation of this, we would expect to be fully onto a direct deposit system with um, no distribution of paper checks. So people could look up their own information. And of course, you know, if if there's anybody that struggles with that, we'd be happy to do that for them. Uh, that would be look up or print the information for them. So employees wouldn't have an option of getting a paper check. It would only be direct deposit. That would be my plan. Yeah. I, oh. It's, um, you know, for it to operate smoothly and to the best of its abilities, that would be the plan. I mean, it, the, the system would have capabilities of making exceptions, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, advertise exceptions. That's what we do at FNAT. Yeah, I think it's pretty common. It's, it's the way the world is moving and, it, you know, it's a, it's a struggle for them. I understand that. And uh, we'll do what we can to make it as easy for them as we can. So you think this is a luxury? I think a municipal employee hot tub is a luxury. <laughs> uh, well, I think you're this right. Doesn't, this, doesn't, this, doesn't, this doesn't sound very luxurious. Yeah. So when you look at the annual expenses, it's kind of funny because the way I added it up, it just it kind of equals what the maintenance cost of it is. So it's an initial investment to uh, keep us current with the times. Is that renewal? The annual renewal um, cost is that fixed for a period of years, I, I imagine that they would eventually raise their renewal they rate. Up every year, um, but these costs on my uh, processing expenses goes up every year too, so. And, and so for the, the folding and stuffing time, I put in our lowest paid employee, so it's probably actually a little higher than that. Have, have you tracked what the annual maintenance fees have been over the years or anything? Have, I mean, you, a lot well, of times, I, know that I have experience with the company and they're right. pretty much going up about three, three percent each year. That's been my experience with them. So this module fits into everything we have already. It fits into our accounting, payroll, tax collection. It's all, all the same company or, you know, divisions of that company. So everything talks to each other. It's um, streamlined and very efficient. And then the, what, what was your thinking behind the request for ARPA funds as opposed to putting it in the regular budget? Well, I guess that my, my thought was that I've, I've recently asked for a lot of money for um, software updates. So I just wasn't gonna push my luck. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Uh, when you know ARPA funds became available, well, it just it kind of makes sense that we could use a small piece of that to get this going. Okay. What do we have left in our ARPA? Four hundred and forty-eight thousand, I think. Okay. <laughs> All right. 
Um, anybody have any thoughts about it? I, I, I trust Jan. Well, of course. <laughs> uh, and, and you trust Dan's judgment that this is the most best possible way for funding as opposed to well, I would just a like, town meeting. You, I, I, if you think it's better to fund it another way, I'd certainly change track for that. So I'm, I'm unfamiliar with all the things you have to use the ARPA money for. So, um, you know, if, if you're almost full and you think this can be funded another way, I'd certainly be happy to, you know, change that. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of um, discretion that we have to, about the ARPA money. So, you know, the, the couple of things that we have generally in mind is to uh, put some money into this building, the li a lift perhaps, um, all the, the kinds of things that as a town we've been wanting to do for a long time, but just have never had the money. Put some money into the public safety building, which is what we're going to be calling it now. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and there's a, a since our, you're, you're allowed to keep it for a few years, how much do we say for the next select board? How much, the one after that, you know, that, that sort of thing. And how much, you know, the, also entitled to, we can give it to businesses that have suffered losses and individuals that have suffered losses as well. So there's a whole lot of potential, um, you know, potential requests. And some of those, we don't quite know how much, the, we don't know how much it's gonna be to fix the public safety building up so that it suits everybody's purpose, all that. But generally $9,000 out of 560, 400 and the original was 569, yeah. 569, and we used 118, and yeah. then we obligated 15, and then we obligated, I have to remember the other one. Uh, anyway, so yes. And and I will say the wish list is getting longer and longer and more no. expensive. So. I know. But I mean, I, I, I see the wisdom in this, and it certainly makes life easier for everybody, I would think. And the whole 21st century thing getting dragged into it kicking and screaming but um we'll get there sooner or later so Jean, are you proposing ninety three hundred dollars uh or are you um out of arpa or the whole thing out of arpa i, I mean to me it would make sense to have the fifteen hundred dollars annual fee come out of your budget operating budget right so yeah. i have that it's and, not to, and to do that this year started this year yeah so yeah i think i think you're right that would be the the smart thing to do and you know if you could collectively sort of give a recommendation of whether you think it should be arpa money or an article or maybe postponed to another date that, that'd be something i'd like to hear i'm personally okay with the one-time stuff ARPA and get gets you up and running and the annual maintenance. Um, you know, so how soon can you spend that ARPA money? We actually have Tomorrow. it. We actually have it in the bank. Okay. Well, enough for you. Enough for your purposes. Yeah. So if we were to do it, then I guess the plan would be for July first. Right. To have it up and running, and then so I would need the fifteen hundred in my operating budget. Right, but that would be after town meeting. Right. So that would be okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then if if for some reason town meeting doesn't think it's a wise idea, we still have we we wouldn't allow the the nine thousand two hundred and ninety five to go to waste. We would make make some make make sure that we could make it make it so that it can be used. Um, okay. But um, that sound good? Yeah, I think I like that. All right, so I'll make a motion that we fund um, for the treasurers the employee web services cost from Zobrio for employee web services. One time perpetual license of $4,295, a one time implementation and training fee of $5,000 for a total of $9,295 out of the ARPA money. Second that. Aye. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous.
Congratulations. Congratulations. Support. I appreciate your support. Um, I, I'd like to jump in for just a second. Sorry, folks, it's Janet. Um, and invite Jan to stay for our discussion of potential planting changes in front of the town office. Jan, you'll, you'll be wondering. <laughs> you'll be wondering about it and you're there. And you know, so if you okay, could stay. I'll stay. Okay. Uh, we'll do it right away. Okay. All right. That, that's the next item. Yeah. So Kate McDonough, Janet Shea, Cynthia Lawton Singer to discuss suggestions for plantings in front of town office. Just welcome and um, thank you for your enthusiasm and what, what you've already sent and um, can't wait to hear more. And I'm happy to share my screen at any time. I've got your documents up. Great. Um, thank you for taking the time to speak with us and to entertain the idea. And um, so basically we're, we're introducing the thought of a um, native plant garden in front of the town office. And this would be in addition to the plantings that are, exist there now that were done in 2021. Um, and, and we'd actually like to um, get more information about who worked on that so that we can coordinate with them and, and make sure that you know, everybody's happy with the result. Um, I know Cynthia has been working on, uh, you know, we've been brainstorming about ideas. We haven't actually done a design, but Cynthia did do a site plan. Um, and probably she's the best person to talk about what, what she's thinking about with the, with the plan. Okay, so if you want to put up the, uh, the plan, I can discuss the different- You know what? Things. I'm going to share my screen with you if that's okay. Then you can. I'm sorry. I'm going to make you co. You, you'll be able to share your screen now. Yep. If that's okay. Not everyone knows how to do that. Maybe maybe Kate would be. Maybe Kate would do that while sure. it talks. Yeah. That might work better. I have the pictures, but I'm not sure. I saw a a plan. I saw. Yeah, it was in that long list. It was right. It was one of the top ones. And the the first, list it should be. Have the first, well, okay. first one and a second one. Yeah, there's, there's, there's two not flowers. Oops. Okay, I don't know where that went. I could have sworn I had that called up already. Okay. That's what I have for the pictures. Oh, the plan's in there. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. Okay, let me. No, yeah, I have to go and share screen. Okay. All right. So I can. Okay. So the first item, yeah, is that's the plan. Okay. So um, can everybody, is everybody oriented towards where the, it, the town office building is labeled? The windows are shown, the front door and the steps. Do you, does everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. All right, so <clears throat> currently there is a garden that was put in last year and I can't point to the element, but it, it says existing planting bed, which surrounds the, right, beautiful, surrounds the ramp, the handicap ramp going up to the steps off of the entry sidewalk. And we would like to take the grassy area that's in front of that and the grassy strip that's along the side of the, um, between the sidewalk and the driveway. And we would like to use those two areas. First, um, we'd like to solarize the soil which would kill the grass and kill all the weed seeds and you know kill any jumping worms that might be in there. Um, and then um, plant it with native plants. And the, um, the big um, floofy thing in the middle of the, um, the front is a tree, right? A proposed tree. And we're thinking about a shad tree, an alternate would be a red bud tree, a small tree, but there is no tree there. And the streetscape is a little barren looking. It would be really nice to have a tree there. And it would also allow us to plant some um, diverse 
you know, because it is a very sunny south facing location, it would allow us to plant some plants that don't necessarily like being in the hot sun all day long with no shade. So it would provide a little shade. It would shade the sidewalk when it's fully grown. The, the outline that I've drawn in is, is a fully grown mature tree canopy. It's not, um, <clears throat> not probably what we'll have immediately when we plant it, but that's the eventual size of the tree canopy. Um, so it would shade the sidewalk a little bit, you know, be a nice element. And um, the other, the um, garden along the strip on the right side um, is the idea would for that would be to have it be laid out more like a traditional garden, a uh, tr traditional perennial border, but it would be um, the perennials in it would be native plants rather than, so it would be laid out in, in size, you know, the height would go up as it went closer to the building so that it would look appropriate and not block street, you know, people driving in and out, you know, we don't want to obscure traffic or anything. Um, and then lower towards the front area um, by the sidewalk and the street. Um, and the areas underneath the tree would be, you know, a mix of sun and shade loving uh, perennials, um, native plants, all, all of them. And the other element that's on the plan is a proposed um, rain garden which is shown um, in front of, well, that's not the rain garden. The rain garden's like under the tree. Go up oh, okay. See, see the little, yeah, that's yep. the rain garden, which is sort of a little depression that would be lined with gravel. Um, and that would, um, because there's currently one gutter on the building, it has a downspout on the left corner that's leaking onto the corner of the building and washing all the mortar out from the, that corner of the building. Um, so we would attach a, a drain pipe to the, the bottom of the downspout and um, have the drain pipe buried underground and it would come out, go through that mound that's going up to the handicap bed. Um, so it would be you know, between the, the ramp and the neighbor's driveway, there would be a, a drain pipe routed through, buried in that mound, and it would, and it would empty out into the, the rain garden, that you, which would be a depression, which the, when it rains, the water would go through there and, um, and come out in that rain garden and, and fill the rain garden with water, and it would, you know, um, allow the plant plantings to get a little extra water when, when it rains. And um, it would also keep the building from having the mortar damaged by it. Um, and it's, you know, it's a, a contemporary way to manage stormwater. It's, you know, what they're doing in Europe and instead of just um, throwing it into a street drain and having it dump into a local waterway. So it's a, a more um, environmentally sound way to manage the water that's coming off your roof instead of going down the building and then washing it to your neighbor's driveway and then going into the street, and going into the drain. Okay. So that's, that's the plan. Are there any questions about any? of the well, planning yeah. part. It, I, I guess I have um, just for just the, I, I know right in the beginning you said you um, expressed a desire to coordinate with the current planting bed or the mm -hmm. indiv individual and or individuals responsible for it. And I would just say that there's really nothing at all sacrosanct about that planting bed. And um, I'd be fine if it gets torn out and replaced with something better oh. or whatever I'm at that's sort of like New Jersey suburban kind of like it just doesn't fit um so 
And but you know, it was great grateful at the time that it's it was better than the alternative at that time, which was bare nothing. Right. Um, and grateful for um, it was the Smiths that 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 you know had had a few extra plants after a, a, a job that they did, and um, you know, so did them. And, and they put it in there. So, but there's nothing about that that okay would require you know you to coordinate or defer in any way to what's there um so yeah, okay. my understanding is that no one is attached yeah. to those particular plants fantastic fantastic um yeah. and it's you know but it, as far as the tree I, I i like red buds i got I, I i have to admit i like red bud trees i like the way that they look in the fall as well as the spring and um i think that they're perfectly lovely and when i saw that that's right. Did you look at the picture of the shad blow? I, you know, I, 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 I have never, I have never actually had a shad blow. So I Let, looked at the picture, and the picture is very nice. Let's, um, maybe Kate or somebody can just explain some of the differences. Um, yeah, if you want to, um, if you want to click on what the next image is, I, what I did was I tried to arrange these so that um, they're somewhat in order of the timing that things would bloom. So there's the red bud, which, um, you know, when it's mature enough, will be flowering all along the stem in, in early spring. Um, and, and it does have beautiful heart-shaped leaves that um, often have a, a nice fall color. Um, the, if, you, if you're looking at um, plants for their value to pollinators, this one would probably rank lower than the shad bush, just in terms of its value. So that's one consideration. So here's an example of a, a shad bush, um, which also is a spring flowering. And, and so that's really valuable to pollinators and can have a really beautiful, more of a reddish orange fall color. And, and a nice fall color too, I think. Yes, yep. We have a hard stop in two minutes, right? Yeah. Yeah, the, um, the shad bush actually really, is very, very good for pollinators. And the red bud is okay, but it, but it, it really feeds a lot less um, wildlife. So that was the reason that we kind of lean towards the shad bush. And there are a bunch of shad bush, three, I believe, um, down near the, in the area in front of the library. Um, in that planting, there's, you know, three of them down there. So that, that could either be a reason to have another one, or it could be a reason to have something different. But, you know, um, you know, there's already a shad bush theme kind of going on in the center of town. Well, one important uh, point of, of all this proposal is to showcase what a native garden can look like to, as a as an educational uh, opportunity for townspeople and people go in, and so they were we're going to have some proposed some some tag labels, um, and maybe little explanations, whatever the designers. And I I do want to point out these are both really experienced professional designers, and yes, it's a little like I guess building building a house or something. You've got to you hire a planner and you can you know, indicate some preferences, but we've got to leave, you know, the actual decisions and the placements and the, you know, one flower versus one tree to, to the experts in the field, you know, considering a multitude of factors, but keeping in mind that our education and demonstration value for this is, we'll hope we'll have a lot, hopefully have a lot of impact. Yeah. So, um, and I, I agree with all that. I'm, I, I don't, I just have preferences. That's all, but they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're unimportant. They're, they are well, very unimportant in the grand. So if this works, things. maybe we um, could propose a find of so, whatever, another. So, but you know, and, and I, um, I, you know, I hate to be so crass as to ask about the, uh, the, the, the topic that um, we haven't really touched upon, but the uh, f proposed funding sources and, or financing of these plans and your work. And I, I hate to advance the discussion artificially early to get to that point. However, we do have a, a, a 
Yeah, we do have time limit. So, um, um, so the good news is that we have uh, funds from a small cities grant, which is earmarked to implement the open space committee. I mean, to implement the open space and recreation plan. And we've tapped into some of that before for the South River Meadow and tapping into those funds for this pur purpose is certainly in keeping with the broad goals of implementing of its purpose in implementing the um, open space and recreation plan. So well, we can cover it. And um, so, well, I mean, just generally speaking, you can cover it is like a excellent answer to the question. Um, so, and so, but Kate and uh, I are volunteering our time, so yeah, it's in paying us. Right. So, if we, if you were to say yes, go ahead with this, um, then we would proceed with putting together a more detailed. I say we, but. Cynthia would do a lot of it, and I would be um, providing my recommendations on plants by putting together a more detailed plan that we would then have something to work with to come up with some estimates on what it's going to cost to buy those plants and, and to do some of the site prep work. Um, and, and, and we also would be looking to recruit volunteers to help us with the actual installation and maintenance. So is it, you, you mentioned maintenance, because that's my question. Currently, um, Ron... Sweet is responsible for maintenance of that garden, and I just this seems like this might this might be a different kind of maintenance, or it might require a different kind of um, ongoing care than Ron is used to providing. To obviously the the garden he's been planting is currently there. Yeah, I mean the hope would be that we could um, initially, you know, Kate and I could um, do the maintenance and and maybe train some other interested volunteers who would want to help out with that too, you know, but it's the kind of thing that people who like to garden and who are, you know, want to contribute something in the town might, might happily do. And it's, it would be kind of a fun project for two people to handle together. You know, it, it's not a huge project. Um, it's not going to be uh, maintenance intensive type of garden, um, but it will require some some upkeep in order to keep it tidy and to keep things from over. You know, one of the things with uh, native plants is that they'll drop seed and they'll spread. So, you, you know, you want it, some things might be more aggressive than others. So there will be some maintenance required to keep things kind of in their spaces. But I think volunteers eventually could could be um, found to do that work. And I and I, you know, we may want to put something in the Conway Currents just to let people know what's going on and and you know, try and recruit some help when the time comes for installing and, and maintaining. Is limiting it to only native species a controversial issue? Well, uh, I assume that means that there are things that you won't be planting. Well, the right. definition of native species can be a little bit controversial. Right. And, and we, and we um, plan to, you know, have an ID for what, what we're, or a definition for what we're calling native species. We're doing eco-regional, right, Kate? Yeah. Yeah. So we, we're really going to focus on the plants that are found naturally occurring um, in basically in New England and relatively close to, to New England. Um, so yeah, for, so some people might think, oh, is echinacea native? Well, it is native to North America, but it's not found naturally occurring in New England. So that's something we would probably not include. And, and, and you know, the reason why is, well, we, I think we wanna be representing to people what is native to our area. And also the things that are native to here have have co-evolved with the pollinators. And so we're trying to um, provide support for those. Right. We want to have signage that will, you know, both list the definition of native 
and also explain why we're choosing to have this native, you know, what the advantage is and that um, uh, native plants that, as, as Kate said, have co-evolved with the pollinators. And I don't know if, if you guys are aware, but there's an uh, apocalypse of, for insects right now, their insect populations are drastically dropping. And the um, insects, especially caterpillars, are the number one source of food for most of our uh, songbirds when they're uh, breeding in their breeding season and, and feeding their babies. So having not enough caterpillars around is going to, or has been leading to a drop off in the bird population as well. So the having the native plants will, you know, be delightful. It'll have, we'll have butterflies and, you know, all kinds of things flying around that are beautiful and interesting, but it's also got an ecological purpose to support the different species that, you know, are being um, threatened these days. Right. So um, what, how do we say yes? <laughs> well, I, I would. Do we need a most? Do we whatever? It's well. What are, what are we saying yes to? Yeah. We're saying yes to going to the next step. Where's yeah? The next for, step. I would. You don't need to. Turning Kate and Cynthia loose. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the next step is is developing a more comprehensive plan with, a, with some with uh, the budget. The budget. The budget. Well, the, the, I mean, I think the 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 approval would be an endorsement of this proposal to create um, the native plant garden there with the, with the water component. And I think that if you just approve that, you know, with the understanding that the funds are gonna be, be covered, uh, that that would take care of it. I, I don't, we, we don't, you know, we don't, I think yeah, that's I, all that's needed. Well, we can yeah, work I, with, with Janet since she's providing the budget, um, we could work with her further on the, you okay. know, the, approved and, and the details with the, with the costs and and the open space committee where the full open space committee is meeting uh in a couple of weeks and this is going to be a, a top agenda item and share it with them and they will you know co-manage it and approve specifically the use of the money i i mean i'm i'm definitely in support in theory i'm just not entirely comfortable without talking to to um to ron about the maintenance. And I, I, I understand, you know, it's probably very likely we can get volunteers, but I'm just uncomfortable with relying upon just assuming that we're gonna have volunteers who are gonna do the ongoing maintenance of this garden. So I just would prefer to get Ron's input. Or the garden club, the garden club were. Well, or I mean, or if, I, I, I mean, I just, I, I think a lot of the volunteers are gonna be end, ending up like me, says so somebody that walked by on a hot summer morning and just didn't like the, how everything was dying. And I bent over, turned the hose on and gave everything water. And just, you know, that's, I did that a couple of times. I think there's a, there was a lot of that. So. Yeah, that, that's also one of the benefits of the native plants is that we will be selecting things that like the conditions that are there and they're tougher plants than your average perennial. So hopefully they won't require as much um, additional watering as as the potted plants from the nursery that are cultivated but so can we can we endorse the idea conditionally yeah um, sounds good okay. i mean we're, we're all in favor but i but I, I do feel like we can't really make that decision without like absolutely commit to that without without consulting ron well should, I, should we I, go I, he'll, be, ron? he'll be grateful <laughs> he will. He will. He'll be great. <laughs> he won't have to mow. He won't have to pay. You know. Right. Right. Mow that. Um, and you know, we will. Kate and I will will be taking care of the maintenance this year for sure. Yeah. Did you say he won't have to mow? No, he won't have to mow the front right. because there won't be any grass. All right, um, thank this, you. This will be an excellent demonstration garden for people in the town to learn more about native plants 
and, and really fits in well with the idea that we are trying to move forward with a pollinator action plan. So. Uh, can I think a showcase of Festival of the Hills? And then, and then uh, I think we, we want your okay for, for putting up, um, you know, the educational signage and, and the, the, the services donated by uh, Cynthia's firm. If that's, that's okay, just as a donated service. And if somebody likes it, you know, maybe they contact her. Yeah. Um, yes, yes. All in good taste. All in good taste. Um, yes. Uh, what else? Do we have to vote? Or I, we, yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, All right. Wonderful. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. So are, are you following up with Ron or should we be following up with Ron? Uh, we'll follow up from with Ron because we're the ones that oh. said we want to talk to Ron. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I just, but but and, and I, I I having having spoken with Ron once or twice about this garden, I'm very confident that Ron will approve of being relieved of these obligations. Um, I can coordinate. This is very neat, Kate. I can coordinate that with you all, and, and you okay. know, speak with him, and then yeah. Perfect. Okay. Sounds good to you, Jan. Yeah. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And if it's, if it's okay, we'll move on to the finance committee meeting. Yep. And um, thanks. Thanks. Roy, are you there? Roy, I know Rihanna's there. Hello. Hello. Hey, Yep, right here. Well, I, I am call the finance committee jointly with the select board to order. We, all right, we, we went over 630, but it, but you know, Alan, you have some family responsibility for that, you know, but <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I dare not I dare not question. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, tonight with, with us we have sitting out comfortably out of camera. Um, Je Je Gemma and the ambulance, um, department 231. Yes, um, if you don't mind, can I start with the salary lines? Because the, the increase in the stipend, I want to give a little background to this is uh, similar to the situation we had with the fire department, where Tom had been intending to increase the stipends over multiple years. Right, I remember. So the, um, the director stipend was increased in 21, and then the assistant was in 22. And they were each done like half of the intended amount. So for the then going forward, it'd be 23 would be the rest of the increase for the director. And then in 24 would be the rest of the increase for the assistant director. So that's what, and that, I just want to make clear that that's a two town administrators request. To <laughs> increase based, that amount. Based on what was expended last year, it looks like it's a pay cut for the assistant director. Oh, yeah, and I, I'm not really quite sure that that might again be me having put it in. maybe something I, got taken out of the wrong line. I actually find that hard to believe that that had, that, that would have been that that line item. Yeah, I think that expended. I that think he's got happen. put in the wrong line. If you look at that, I think oh, that's what this uh, was. Yeah, right. there's something I just yeah. I mean, so. So just wanted to make that request. And then I'll leave the, the rest up to Gemma. <laughs> Yippee. Zero in on the one mistake and the whole thing. Yeah. Now, now, now it, it, well, hey, at least it was somebody else's mistake. I'm trying to read the tiny freaking thing. Um, yeah, so that's the, that's the salary side of it. Everything else has stayed relatively the same. Um, 
I'm trying to remember what we changed, what we went up on. Um, like radios? A little bit on the radios, a little bit on the um, software maintenance. Um, those are those two in particular are ones that we basically have no control over. Um, the radios is that's our portion of the countywide wide radio system. I'm sure Bob probably explained it before in his meeting as well. Um, so that's just because we have X number of people, we have to pay that amount of money towards the radio support system pretty much. Um, and the software support, that's the company that we use for our report writing and our software. Um, it cha usually changes a little bit every year. Um, you tends to go up. Um, so that's what that is. Um, hourly going, hourly employee going down from last year, from 11,000 to 8,000. Uh, well, 22 is 8,000. Which one are you looking at? Oh, um, what's, what's going down? The hourly employee. Oh, we went down from 21 yeah. to 22. But... And yeah, we went down last year with it just because we don't have as many EMTs. So yeah. It seems to be, you know, we're we're in the ballpark of it. Um, I meant to look at the recent numbers, but I didn't get to it in the office tonight. But yeah, our it's our call volume has dropped some because of COVID. It's starting to kind of come back up to where it was, but it's still lower than what it had been. And not having as many EMTs, we're not paying out as much per. You know, we're not necessarily having three people on each call or or whatever. Sometimes we only have the required two mm -hmm. most of the time. Um, <laughs> so that's why that went down. That's better than a lot of our neighboring towns. Mm -hmm. There are days. There are days. Um, let's see. The only other couple of things are the training part of it. I've got to at some point have to talk to Jan about whether or not that needs to get moved into a salary line because it's reimbursement for training time. And so I got to, I'll figure that out with her. Um, but the budget amount will stay the same. It's just going to be a matter of if it needs to be a different code. Um, and the license and exam amount, that one were. Uh, Veronique and I have been in the process of trying to put a make a revolving account that's specifically for it'll have like 5,000 in it just for reimbursing EMTs when they get their license because the way the timing works when you take the class you get it become an EMT you do all the stuff that you need to do to get reimbursed it's already past the fiscal year so then we're trying to deal with you know payments from previous years and all this other stuff it's an excellent um, reason to have your own revolving. So Mike said that would be the easiest way to not have to go to, you know, town meeting every time for previous bills. You just have to go to it the one time to get it revolving. Button. Right. So we're going <laughs> to pretty much aim to do that um, this year if we can get it done for town meeting. Um, have we successfully done that? Has anybody gotten their EMT? Um, we've gotten in the last year and a half roughly we've gotten three new emts um at this point none of them have been reimbursed yet because we haven't figured out all the paperwork um two of them are two of them are ready to be reimbursed yeah. and as soon as you know it's either going to go to town meeting as a, a line item to previous years or once this goes into effect we'll just do it out of that nothing says um, welcome to conway town service then, then a lengthy <laughs> wait for reimbursement well hey it happens at this but luckily nobody's really beaten down my door demanding <laughs> payment immediately, so that's that's a bonus um but yeah hopefully the whole revolving account thing will go into effect and that'll make it a lot easier to just reimburse people as as it's needed not you know yeah yeah have to wait till town meeting and all of that stuff so that's pretty much the majority of any changes are there any questions, comments, concerns, or? Well, thank you, thank you, John. Not not for me. I have a quick question though. Are you are we responding? Are we going to respond for Ashby? I know a couple of years ago, Ashby all had 
only like one or two EMTs. Is that still in the works? There was talk that we would have a sharing agreement with them. Um, Negotiations broke down. Yeah, that I mean, Ashfield, as far as the EMTs go, Ashfield is they're in with the Highland um, uh -huh. regionalized and ambulance. So uh -huh. their main coverage is is to is through Highland. Um, okay. We do have a mutual aid agreement with Highland. So if you know they can't get a crew, we do sometimes respond to Ashfield, but it's not it's not like an automatic response kind of thing or anything like that. Um, you, you were referring to the fire coverage. Afterwards. That was more the fire department. There was fire. conversation about trying to combine the two fire departments yeah. and it kind of went to hell. I think. Well, it's and all right. Yeah. There's um, a way more. Actually has reorganized their fire department. They've hired a full-time chief. Yeah, they're um, they're doing a little better. They are. They've got a few more people and stuff. Yes. So it's not, but I my understanding was the financial side of it and who, you know, where the different financial responsibilities would lie between the two different towns was just way too complicated to to figure out so thank yeah. you john i i have no further questions I have no, thank you so yeah. we have so how many do we have um uh, you have six volunteers and plus you i'm one of the six you're one of the six all right <laughs> okay thank you well thank you you're welcome roy and rihanna have you any questions no no i learned no question Thank you. You're on mute, Roy. Are you, Roy? I'm, I'm on a different machine than I normally am. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. I'm talking about you. Ver, Bernie, can you throw off the spreadsheet again? Sure. So, uh, okay, so. What are we looking at here? Forty nine. So what's what's most of the increase due to the? Um, did I miss that? That a large part is the salary. I'm sorry, the stipend increase is part. Four hundred for billing. Um, you know, five hundred for new equipment. Yep. One hundred. One hundred for software support. And then the rest is coming up on the. Um, Okay. And and uh, some for Gemma and I guess Chris stays the same, but Gemma is a bargain at twice the price, and that's not a, that is not an exagger that is not an exaggeration. Oh, yeah. I'm not. I know I'm not questioning that. Plus, it looks like um, she's under budget. Well, wait a minute. So not much is there for 2022, but certainly for 2021, she's under budget. Yeah. So. No, I, I'm, I just, I didn't know what, uh, yes, I see three, uh, 3,000, okay, sure. Okay, that makes sense. No, I don't have any more questions. All right, I have a question regarding the uh, revolving fund. I mean, how much uh, are we looking to capitalize that with? I think there's 30 or $35,000 in there now, right? Is that, is that right? This would be a new revolving fund um, specifically to pay back the EMTs to reimburse them. And we were talking about leaving 2,500 in this budget and um, 5,000 to see the new revolving fund. Okay, all right. So I mean, if that's the case, that would, that, that would knock down this, the budget request. For this budget, yes. Right, right. Yeah, if that happens, yes. Because, I mean, it's a small budget, it's a small department, and that's why modest increases, you know, have an overall, it's what is it, an overall 12% increase. So, so it would be 51,507. Right. Yes. Yeah. But, Thank you. Excellent. Collection is going okay. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, the billing company has been doing pretty good at trying to keep on top of stuff and they haven't sent me anything recently, you know, saying there's X number of outstanding things or anything like there have been other years. So yeah, it's, it's probably coming at some point. I just haven't gotten it yet. But yeah, for the most part, the biggest thing is that a lot of our, our patients are Medicare. So we don't, we only get 
the set amount from Medicare and it's like yeah. if we have to have an intercept and then we pay the intercept fee we pretty much are in the we're in the negative before we start <laughs> so just the name of the game and uh, I've been talking to our billing company about increasing our rates a little bit just we haven't increased the rates in probably 10 years so we're thinking about doing that maybe one or two percent just to you know be able to try to collect a little bit more from insurance companies that that do pay a decent rate and but that'll be probably in the beginning of next fiscal year when that goes into effect so Okay. Jim, Jim, it's Roy again. How many yeah. calls? Did we, how many calls did we have this this uh, well in twenty twenty one? And how many do we have now? Do you know? I do not know right off the top of my head. It's generally between like eighty and a hundred. Um, I know with COVID, it fluctuated a lot. It went you know up and down, and we didn't have anything for a while, and then we had everything, and um, so I don't have those numbers right in front of me. If I thought about it, I would have done that before. Well, that, that's okay, but I, I thought years gone by, we've had 200 calls or, or thereabouts. So there really, have been times, yeah. Yeah, okay. It is what it is. <laughs> less <Yeah>. is better. <laughs> <laughs> I go for less. Thanks for that much help. Nope, we don't vote on it quite yet. We will be voting them all together. Okay. And works for me. Thank you, Emma. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, next. So um, next is the veterans budget. And there really isn't much change in the operating budget here on 420. You can see that it's actually gone down just a touch, which is interesting. That's the amount that we pay um, to be a member of you know, the services. I think that's based on how many veterans you have. This one is. Oh. This, the benefits line is, and currently I believe we don't have anybody, but um, I was told it was good to keep it as a placeholder in case somebody comes along in the next year and then you know, they need benefits. There's actually somebody who may be coming along. So it's good to keep it as a placeholder. And that's really, and then we just up the flags, $25. And so actually it's going, net is going down as you can see, so. Wow, and the, the flags is, is, the, is, the, is the, on the telephone poles, that's. Yeah, yeah, we just have a budget right to be able to purchase the flags and they do it in bulk and yeah. Right, but they they actually spend a lot more than that and they fundraise and um, they do. I always thought, I don't know. I'd have to ask Don about that. <laughs> Brian, Brian and Daryl, I've been doing it for years. Oh, okay. Oh, Brian Blake's. Okay, yes, yes. Daryl, and so. Daryl doesn't live in Conway anymore. I no, don't... but he drives the truck while while while, <laughs> while Brian Hank was stands on the back of it. And that well, there may be two different flag things going on here. There's the flags we put out on the street, but don't we also have some memorial flags in cemeteries? Or no? I guess a separate thing, but. Right. So I'm not sure. Right. Yeah, I. I haven't delved into that. On All right. Side, so you have, you have to find out. Delve into the flag minutiae. <laughs> <laughs> well, this looks good to me. It's six hundred dollars less than last yeah. year. Yeah. So. And what are what are operating costs consist of? The one, that's the one that went down. The operating went down. Yes. Yes. And so that's what they assessed us at. They told me this is how much it is for the for you for this year. So. Yep. All right. I, I have no questions. I mean, I'm going to thank you for uh, Ronnie for bringing it together, the budget. Okay. Sounds good. Ron Rihanna, have you any questions, comments? No, oh, I think the budget is fine. It's almost the same. Good. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Um, so be before, before you guys go, so just a little house cleaning about next week. So, um, the frontier frontier has come in with their operating budget numbers 
I don't know if they've come in with their capital request numbers yet or have they? I don't Did the capital committee with the tennis court and all that remember? We haven't but, met since. Yeah. Um, so, and the grammar school has, they haven't formally adopted their budget yet. That won't be done until the St. Patty's Day. St. Patrick's Day, of course. So um, we're going to have St. Patrick's Day meeting, really? Well, <laughs> So what I'm saying, was, no. <laughs> we, we, we could do the school budgets next week, even though the school committee will not have formally adopted the grammar school budget yet. Um, but we, um, and Frontier may not have, may not have their capital request in yet. All right. But we do have the Frontier budget has been adopted by the Frontier School Committee. Okay. Uh, so we can either meet and see what's fresh and ready um or we can skip a week or um well, if you skip a week then we have to do both uh, the frontier regional economy grammar school in one right. Evening, correct right i, I mean Ryan, how you feel Ryan? I, i'd rather get a preliminary on the frontier i mean in, in general is it going to be what's the increase yeah. for our, our percentage last year we were down but of course that's comparative from the year before no, that's grammar. The grammar school is the right. frontier is 2.9. I think. Oh, okay. yeah, 2.9% increase. That's 2. all 2.9. Yeah, for frontier. Right. Okay, um, good. Well, you, haven't discovered, any, you right. haven't discovered any more students who are secretly going to frontier who uh, never were accounted for. That's good. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, wait. no. So, wait a minute. So, if there's no surprises with frontier, I mean, I, I don't need the pre preliminary, but if there are going to be surprises, we should have it. The, the budget's been approved. I, no, I um, it went. They did the public hearing. Yeah, we had we had the public hearing. It, it was yeah. um, you know, it's we didn't we, we it was favorable for us. Um, Deerfield and Sunderland got it wasn't so favorable. Yeah, but okay. you know, um, okay. so we've got but, the lucky the brass ring this year. It's only yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and um, I kid ourselves. <laughs> well, if we want to go over it, do Shelly and do Shelly uh, and and uh, Darius have to join us? And I don't want to put too no. much work late. No, I um, they don't. If they don't have to, to join us, I'd like to I actually I'd like to review preview it, and then uh, we, we don't, don't have, have to spend the time for the right. to look at. Yeah, so so we we'll, we'll meet and I'll, you know we'll look at both budgets and um, you know I. I helped. I helped to write both of them. So yeah, yeah. Um, as so usual. So are we meeting next week then with the yeah. with Blackboard? Yeah, yeah. We'll do okay. the we'll do the school budgets and when the capital request comes in, we'll we'll do that Simple. later. Okay. So we so next week we'll have the Conway Grammar School uh, proposed by also Frontier. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you can have them, is that is that Shelley uh, who will send them along, Corita, or is that is that Kirsten Gordon? Um. So, so the, they've already they've already sent us the budget. I mean, you know, I have the budget. We 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 we've already voted on the budget as school committee. Okay. Well, um, if you could forward along to Roy, Rihanna, and me, please, that would be great. So I can take a look at it in advance of the meeting. Okay. Sure. We'll, we'll send it out. Thank you very much. Sure. Sure. Well, we'll see you next week. Very good. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Thank see you, you next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye. All right. Items not anticipated. Town administrator update. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> Erica gave me. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to read last week's that we tabled. Yeah. You have it, so that's fine. Um, all right, so for this week, um, I wanted to let you know that we have received the notification for our FY23 Chapter 90 award, which will be $261,276, which is down a little bit, a couple thousand from last year, which was 263668. Um, I did reach out to um, Jamie Stanton of Nexamp for an update on the situation. And um, I did receive the following reply via email. Hello all, as a follow-up to the testing performed at the main Poland Road solar site, the acoustics testing did confirm the presence of audible noise. 
uh, approximately five kilohertz. This doesn't provide any immediate resolution, but we have validated the existence of this abnormality. To this end, we've engaged a third party engineering firm with specialized experience conducting electrical testing and grid scale modeling in New England. To date, we have ruled out any simple clear cut issues and we expect to have results of the deeper analysis within the next three weeks. Next example, we'll discuss reactivating the system with Eversource as soon as we've arrived at a solution we are confident will not negatively impact a butters. So, so it's disconnected now. It's been oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, a couple months now. I think. Yeah, for deeper analysis. For deeper analysis. Not just analysis. Yeah. Deeper analysis. Yes. Well, let's, let's hope it works out. Yes. Yes. I look forward to hearing what the solution is. Um, I participated in a number of webinars last week, uh, one on ARPA and ARPA training, um, actually with Joe was on that one as well, community one-stop grant application process, a state legislative update um, put on through MMA, and then a climate assessment workshop put on by the Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, and that was interesting. It was their first um, sort of statewide trying to get input from municipal leaders across the state as to what their um, what they feel their climate threat priorities are. So, and it's sort of the first part of this information gathering. So I wanted to kind of jump in on that, and see what direction the whole state, and, and they're tying in a lot of the municipal vulnerability program grants. So I just thought it'd be good to keep tabs on that. I have completed four of the nine modules for my last class for the MCPTO, and I'm hope, hoping to be certified by the end of March. Well, congratulations. <laughs> well, no, congratulations. No, don't jinx me. <laughs> I'm going to finish the class. <laughs> no, but it's it should be good and very timely because we're also going to be working on Delabar very, very uh -huh. shortly. Um, the MVP planning group met again to discuss the upcoming grant application that the RFR is coming out, I think, next week sometime. So we should, and then the applications are due in May and should be funded by June, we hope. So, and then, um, you know, there's there's quite a bit of management that goes on up at the transfer station that, that we've inherited uh -huh. and um, from the Board of Health. And one of them is that groundwater monitoring is, is required by DEP because it's a, it's a closed landfill. So Fuss and O'Neill has been doing that work for years and had just sent me the, a proposed contract for that, so which looks good to me. Um, and they've also um, put in a little bit for on-call um, services. As you're aware, the back of the landfill is kind of caving in and we're going to have to do some work up there soon. And when we get to that point, the on-call services are for engineering help for us to come up and, you know, make sure that we are doing it all correctly. Mm -hmm. So, and that was it. So the one other thing that, that you didn't mention, and I forgot oh. to mention as well, is we were, we, we did an ARPA working group. Oh, yeah. Meeting <laughs> right. As well, where, where, where actually um, we spent a lot of it talking about housing and senior housing. And, um, hopefully got... Pixie to re-engage in the subject. And we'll see. We'll see. But um, pretty shy. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, it's it's tough when you're traumatized and scarred from these experiences to yeah. pick it up again. So, um, so I'm hopeful. But yeah, you know, we did meet with a developer. It wasn't the right person. But we'll see. But he's got some good leads for us, so that was good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very well. Uh, select board member comment concerns mail announcements next meeting is monday march 14th at 6 p.m do we want to move we, we you know we don't have to have it here we can move it into the conference room at the town i but, don't know how that will work because i we don't have a screen and stuff for you to be able to see if you want to do that it could be a little tricky especially with members of the public in the which conference room? In the back of the town offices. But it's kind of a small space, and I don't know. I don't know how this. It, it, right. it was quite the. All right. So then it will be at this location. It will be at this location, okay. the town hall, five Academy Hill Road, six p.m. With cushions. <laughs> oh, we're gonna. Have, so we're promised cushions this time. Let's see, I won't hold my. Bring your own. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. 
Um, next item is, is uh, executive session. Uh, so this is regarding 69 Main Street. And it's the purpose of the executive session is to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property if the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body and the chair does so declare. So with that, we are going to end the public meeting. We have to have a roll call vote. At, with a roll call, and we need a roll call vote to go into executive session. And then following the conclusion of the executive session, we will also close formally close the public meeting, but we will not be adjourned. We will not be continuing any legal business after the conclusion of the executive session. So um, we have a motion to go into executive session. I move that we go into executive session. Second. Yeah, all in favor, you have to say. Erica, aye. Bob, aye. And Philip, aye. So we'll stop the recording and we are in executive session.